Well, well, well. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. I hope you're well. Oh! I have not been... I have not... Oh! Oh, Will has a little message. I have not seen Black Widow. I have Please not seen go. Black Widow. Please do not ask me. I have also not it's, seen it. I don't know when the hell I'm going to see it. It's It's hard being, you know the comic book friend and everybody wants to know like did you do did you see black widow what did you think of black widow oh my god did you see this part in black widow and i have to tell them i'm not ready to go to the movie theaters yet and i don't want to pay 30 dollars for it oh, on it's disney plus <laughs> it's 30 dollars. So which to be fair that's what it would cost for me and my wife to go to the movies anyway okay but I'm already paying eight dollars a month for Disney Plus. Why do I got to pay another thirty for a special movie? I don't have a wife. <laughs> yeah, so, so I don't want to do that. Wait, if you buy it, can I watch it? That's see, that's the uh, that's the thing I don't know because my in laws really want to watch it, and I don't know if if they watch it on their profile, does that affect me? Do I get charged for it? So. I might just have to bite the bullet and do it. Well, you will I, get charged for it, but will everybody be able to watch? Like, how long do you have to watch it? Do you only get one shot to watch it? Once, once you buy it, you you have it. Uh, lock, stock, and barrel. Like, it's yours. Oh, so, so then the we question have I have, then. Yeah. But I don't know if it carries on from profile to profile. I don't see why not. See, Will has, no. like, nine profiles on his Disney+. Plus. <laughs> yes. Are you talking? I'm the are you sure you're talking through your mic right now? Because you do sound like there's, you're talking through the room. I should be talking through my mic. Well, I'll double check that while I read the yeah. notifications. Oh. Like uh, we got, we I got forgot to press the two buttons on the mixer. You should do that. Now, uh, how am I now? How am I now? Am I good? You sound exactly the same as you did two seconds ago. Well, I don't know what to P- tell you. Punch the mic. Punch the mic right now. Yeah, I don't think you're talking through that. <laughs> Dismantle it OS, says... thank you for the 25 months. Uh, Spoopy Girl, thanks for the 200 bits and the gifted subs. Uh, Nyankus, thank you for 17 months. Roberto, hello, how are you doing? K- Kate M. Cat, thank you for the 100 bits. Fellas, we need to know who you're going to main with Nicktoons Smash Brothers. LOL, LOL. I'm going at Nigel Thornberry all the way. Uh, also, I'll note, Will, that uh, uh, Discord has a weird noise gate where, like, tapping the mic or, like, doing pops and claps doesn't work. So you have to, like, whisper into the mic and see if that works. Um, anyway, we're going to talk about Nicktoons, uh, All-Stars, the Smash Bros. knockoff. I'm uh, main and Captain Falcon. Uh, Spoopy Girl, X for another uh, two more given subs. And Dragon Armor for it with the 13 months uh like a sadist i keep coming back for more thanks for all the entertainment well thank you dragon armor i'm i I hope you uh enjoy uh the pain we cause you hi will hi how am i now sound the same mother effing we have a lot to talk (laughs) whenever there's uh whenever there's a week where nothing happened uh we end up having a lot to talk about for some reason Yes. And I'm not sure if I want to title this podcast something about uh, the million and a half dollar Super Mario 64 that was just sold, which is very important news. Or if I want to talk about the more news we got surrounding the OLED switch, because the OLED switch is going to get a lot more clicks, Will. However, it's really not much important news. Yeah, but I feel like the... $1.5 $1.5 million Super Mario 64 is the more recent news. So at least for this week, it'll be the uh-huh. more important topic. Right, right. Can so, you? That's can just you, my opinion. Can you go to the web app and let me see how that sounds? Or I'm sorry, the... Uh, I'm in the web app. The actual app, the, the, the not web app. Discord app. Yes, let me All see right. how that sounds. I will be right back. Oh, hi, Disc Jew. I'm sorry to abruptly leave you. Be, Will has been having a lot of Discord problems today. I thought maybe it was Discord itself. Um, 
When's the next ear licking stream? Uh, Thursday. Yep. You can you can hear me do that on Thursday. Now here's the thing. Will's gonna uh check. Will's gonna go into uh, his web app and he's gonna look like shit, but he might sound a lot better. All right. How am I now? You sound fantastic. Okay. You look like like garbage, but you sound fantastic. So you know what? So I think audio is more important. <laughs> yeah. So it's either I look like crap, but I sound great, or I look great, but sound like crap. <laughs> it's actually going okay right now, but I know that it's completely right unstable. Now. So. Yeah. So, all right. But this will be, this is a treat for the podcast listeners. Yes. All right. Let's talk about this uh, $1.5 million Super Mario 64. Now, when I heard tell of this, I called bullshit. Um, we had a little conversation well, it is about kind this of, the other day. It is kind of, like, the more I looked into it, the more it is kind of bullshit. <laughs> but maybe for different reasons. Yes. So let's let's get into this. Uh, this is, as per Polygon, a copy of Super Mario 64 sold for $1.5 million, raising eyebrows. Yes. My big fat eyebrows were raised for sure. Yep. Uh, last week, a game cartridge of The Legend of Zelda sold for eight hundred and seventy thousand dollars, the highest ever paid for a video game at auction. Uh, and then before that, it was a copy of the original, the original Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario. Uh, and that was a, that was a while ago. And this, yeah, uh, this literally just happened. So we just got the highest selling game, and now we got another highest selling game. Um, but The Legend of Zelda only held the record for a few days before it was figuratively butt-stomped <laughs> into second place. Uh, Over the weekend, a sealed copy of Super Mario 64 sold for $1.56 million at Heritage Auctions. Heritage Auctions, I have bought comic book art from them. Um, this moment has been approaching for a while as video games and other nostalgic media have been increasing in popularity and mainstream appeal and importantly price over the past couple of years but video game preservation and history experts were surprised to see super mario 64 breach that record despite the pristine quality of the of the copy despite the pristine quality of the copy period super mario 64 is not a particularly rare game Nintendo sold millions of copies since it was first released in 1996. But the majority of those copies of Super Mario 64 don't have a 9.8 WADA rating, a score from the video game trading com the video game grading company that means the quality is near perfect in both production and preservation. Seller Heritage Auctions called the sealed copy of Super Mario 64 the quote highest graded copy of the game it's ever sold. I had no idea Heritage Auctions did uh did video games. I think they just deal in the uh the selling of the game itself. They're not in charge of like, you know, actually, you know, doing the work and like going over it and grading it. They're just basically in charge of, you know, bringing it from buyer to seller and right. things like that. Right. No, right. I, I I understand. Yeah. Um so I mean with that kind of money, Heritage Auction will get involved. Nine point eight is very high uh we mm -hmm. not many games get graded this is like a this is like a n relatively new thing that's been happening within the last couple of years however yeah it's very similar to how comic books and uh and trading cards work so yes uh so comic books and that. trading cards comic books and trading cards have been uh graded for years uh specifically with comics it's the comic grading commission i think it's called cgc yep. they will look over a comic book and depending on the quality of it they'll give it a rating from one to ten um no comic gets a ten um and what they do is once they grade the comic they put it in a vacuum sealed plastic case that cannot be opened otherwise it'll you know devalue the pro the the grade of the comic but if you go to a comic book convention or even some stores and you see these like hard plastic shell vacuum seal cases. That's what they are. They are generally older or important comic books that get this grading because that helps preserve the value of it. And it uh, makes a fine point on just how good of quality the comic you're looking at is. Uh, Will is way louder than Bob. Is that true? There you go. There you go. All right. How, how about now? Are you happy? 
Are you satisfied? Hello. Yeah, you should be fine. All right. Uh, so, also of note, you have to pay to make a to to grade something, whether it be a yes. game or a comic book. And uh, <laughs> patches Mc, McGee says, "I'm never happy." <laughs> <laughs> so you have to pay to get a, to get something graded, and depending on the game or the comic or whatever. Uh, you could lose money on the deal. You could pay to get the game graded or whatever, and then it gets a lower rating than you think, and then all of a sudden it's worth less than you thought it would be. Yeah. Um, also, you can get points taken off your grading for manufacturer defects. Like if something yeah. happens... I mean, so, a lot of times in the collecting market, we see uh, manufacturer defects as something that could uh, sometimes make make the thing worth more. But yeah. there's other cases where a manufacturer defect, like maybe it's bent in a certain way, uh, or or it's got like a scratch or or like a like a like a page missing, like that could be yeah. it, that will, will take points off of your uh, off of your grading. Um, I know specifically in comics, the the spine of it, like when you open it, it usually gets white and cracked. That that's something that like uh, the CGC definitely takes points off of. But the problem is, no comic has an intact spine. It's like almost impossible to find one. So that's what I mean by like that grading number is like very important. The higher right. it is, the more pristine it is, the more valuable it is. Uh, something like Action Comics number one. Yes, there have been many issues that have gone for, you know, six figures, some even seven figures, but none of them are like higher than a six because that comic is so old and. I just clicked on an 8.5, but obviously this is probably like the highest selling one that's I'm, ever been created. Yeah, yeah, three three point twenty five million. For yeah, this action comics number one. Yeah, but you got to think like that's an eighty year old comic, and for it to be eight point five graded, the person had to have known that like this has to be taken care of, and nobody did back then. That's why comic books especially from the 30s and especially important issues are worth that much money so, uh, and on this article it says zur zolo which i guess is the guy who sold it uh said yeah. that while there were hundreds of thousands of copies initially published it's estimated only about a hundred exist today and in varying yes. conditions I, like you said they're probably all like missing the front page and stuff uh there, he said yeah. this copy is among the best kept ones so 8.5 uh i want to say that mario 64 sold millions of copies it's a it was it, mario 64, it was a very popular game mario 64 is the best-selling super uh sorry not super the best-selling nintendo 64 game with almost 12 million copies sold yeah so there are at most 12 million copies <laughs> of super mario 64 out there in the wild now I and, and that's why when I saw this, I was like, there's no way. The only way is if there was some variant I didn't know about, which is why the original Super Mario Bros. sold for so much is because it was a test market variant that had a special piece of tape on, on it yeah. to seal it. And that's the only way you could tell that it was the test market variant. So I, I was like, maybe there was something they discovered about it. There's a certain variant of Mario 64. Um, but what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say that of the, you know, those 12 million copies of Mario 64 that are out there, most of them probably don't have the box. Some of them probably have torn labels. Most of them don't still have the instruction manual anymore. Right. The fact that this is a complete inbox version and it's in good condition is noteworthy. And it probably could fetch a decent amount of money. I agree. 1.5 million dollars though <laughs> yes <laughs> is a lot of money for a game that's just over 20 years old and has sold how you many know? millions of copies uh specifically 11.91 million yeah. almost 12 million copies so to give you to give you an no idea way. let me let me back up a bit the best-selling comic book of all time is X-Men number one by Chris Claremont and Jim Lee from, I think it was 1990. That sold 8 million copies. That is confirmed the best-selling comic book of all time. 
you will find that in bargain bins and dollar boxes left and right. That is not a valuable comic. Even like the highest, you know, graded ones don't go for that much money. It's common. You will always find it. I think I have like three copies of it myself because it's always just in grab bags. So I, so the fact that the highest selling comic is not worth a lot of money, but the highest selling Nintendo 64 game is regardless of quality. Like that's bothersome to me. Um, That, that tells me, that tells me that it's not so much, you know, the quality of the game or like what it is, but the name value of it and the fact that it's sold that much money, that's what's important. So I heard somebody say that this was uh, just a promotion for the auction house, but mm-hmm. it's Heritage Auctions. They're a very popular auction house. I don't yeah, think it that... can't be that. Yeah. Something else is, as somebody else also said, they're probably just trying to, to wash, it's probably somebody trying to wash some money. You know, they're probably doing yeah. this, some big tax thing or something. Yeah. Which is also possible. Um here in this article it says a copy of super mario 64 graded 9.4 a plus sold at heritage auctions in january for thirty eight thousand four hundred dollars that's a 9.4 selling this year in january for it's only four it's only 0.4 less thirty eight thousand. why in the ever-loving fuck it's a 9.8 selling for 1.5 million. It doesn't make any sense. I also want to point out, and um, I didn't put this in the key, but this came out like either yesterday or today. Heritage Auction also recently sold an unopened copy of Skyrim, graded 9.2, and it sold for $600. Skyrim. Well, no, no, no. That okay. I will defend that because a lot of so un sealed copies of games do catch a lot of money. It doesn't even matter what the game is if it's sealed. It it's rare because you know you games are expensive and you're buying it to play it. You know, right? Um, but is it a PC? But version? I don't. Uh, it's the Xbox 360 version. Yeah. yeah, no, sealed console I mean, games catch a lot of money. And 600 isn't that much compared to friggin' 38,000. It's a lot. I think it's I think it's a bit much for the most common Elder Scrolls game, regardless of platform mm-hmm. or uh, package quality. Like $600 from an auction house for Skyrim? Mm-hmm. Like, say that out loud. <laughs> Six hundred dollars for Skyrim for a for rock shout. Yeah, that that's ridiculous. Um, Lucifer's friend in the chat says Skyrim Xbox three sixty is twenty dollars sealed on eBay. You should buy it. <laughs> there you uh, go. Maybe you could sell it on Heritage Auctions for six hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. Was it graded? Yeah, nine point two. I think it said. Ooh, good luck getting a nine point two though. Um. Video Game History Foundation co-director and video game retailer Kelsey Lewin. Is that? That is uh, Pink Gorilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Pink Gorilla. She's been on Metal Jesus. Right, right, right. Uh, Two genuinely suspect things about this. Oh, I'm glad she's uh, she's sus about this, too. Despite a lack of popular... Uh, population reports, there are many known sealed Super Mario 64 first prints. Uh... Auctions on other speculative items actually went relatively low this week with one matte sticker Mario selling for only 3600 So I guess that's the thing, is that it's, it's you know, suspected to be a first print. And is the matte sticker the thing that makes it a first print? I guess. Uh... Or is that the original Mario Brothers that has the matte sticker? The original Mario Brothers is the one that has the sticker on it. Definitely. I think by by Mario 64, they had figured out how to package games to a store. So it was probably shrink-wrapped properly. Right. So 
Well, no, she's referring to Mario 64. I gotta, I gotta find where it says what in particular. Like there, I... yeah, that's the thing. This this copy sold. There are there are different versions of Mario 64 out there. I know that for a fact. I know at least of. There's the original one that's rated kids to adults, and then they they reprinted it, and it was rated E for everyone. But they're not really specifying what about this 9.8, 1.5 million dollars Super Mario 64 makes it worthy of a 9.8 grade and worth 1.5 million dollars. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. I exactly. So. Yeah, the, it, everything just says it's a near pristine copy. I'm like, I get it, but that's not enough. There's got to, there should, in my brain, something else has to be has to be different about this because there's yeah. gonna be another nine point eight eventually. Yeah. Especially now, now that people are like, yo, I could sell it for one point five million. I'm getting my freaking Mario sixty four graded, and people are gonna get their yeah. Mario sixty four graded. Will... There's gonna be a bunch of high rated ones, and that's going to drive the price of this down fast. And that's what like concerns me because now you have people, all they hear is that a copy of Super Mario 64 sold for 1.5 million. They're not going to, they're not going to know or think to think about why it sold for that much, much, what makes it special. All they're going to know is that that game sold for that much. So they're going to look for that game in their collection, find it and try to sell it for that much money. And then that's going to drive the price up of not just Mario 64, but all Nintendo 64 games and eventually all video games, all retro video games, because they're all going to go up because people think, you know, the same thing happened to comics in the 90s. Just because one comic started selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars, everybody thinks that every comic can eventually sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the same thing's happening with video games right now. Yeah, it's been like it, it, in the past couple of years. It, basically, you can only get a good deal on some retro video games if you go to like a yard sale. But there's yeah. people going to yard sales specifically to find boxes of games and buying all of them. And yeah. that happened with comics a while back. I, I think the video game industry is following a lot of the same patterns that the comic book industry was when the com when comic books started to get popular. Um, so in this article, it says other video game history foundation founder, Frank Sifaldi, uh, is that another, yes. is, is he also another pink gorilla guy? No, I but I know that. he's, um, I know he's done work with them. He does, he does his own thing. Okay. Uh, I, I met him at Long Island retro gaming. I gave him his magazines back. Oh, very nice. Uh, he expressed initial skepticism based on the sudden value jump. The, he says, quote, the price jump on this stuff is so sudden and on such specific items that I do not believe it happened naturally. I agree. It all feels really suspect, in my opinion. Uh, too genuinely suspect. Oh, I read that already about, about what uh, Kelsey said. Mm -hmm. um, in 2020, a sealed copy of Super Mario Brothers graded 9.4 by WADA sold for 114,000. There's a decimal place missing a record at the time a year later a rare copy of super mario brothers graded 9.6 by watt sold for 600 660 000, more than five times the 2020 price so that already shows that video game prices are going up like crazy but that at least makes sense because that copy of the original super mario Bros. with that sticker on it that the, the test market run is extremely yeah. rare and to find it in such great condition is really rare this doesn't make sense <laughs> yeah it's very popular there's going to be a lot of these yeah there's going to be a lot of, and even if you do have the box you know it's not going to be a 1.5 million dollar box right uh sonic tonic says could someone enlighten me about these places that do the grading how do did they become so trustworthy and the end the absolute authority and if I had something so valuable, I'm supposed to trust mailing it to them for their opinion? Yikes. I feel like you know more about that. Yeah. Uh, well, I know um, CGC, which uh, actually stands for the Certified... Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this word. G-U-A-R-A-N-T-Y. 
Genuity? Granty Company uh, is the world's leading third-party service for comic books, trading cards, magazines, uh, concert guarantee. posters, and more. Certified guarantee company. Ah, English is my <laughs> first language. Um, I couldn't spell guarantee been a, if you asked me to. Do you, you put a gun into my head? I realized the other day I can't spell curriculum, and that is <laughs> part. Don't. That is. That is part of my nine to five is knowing that word. Nope, I put an O and there is no O. So yeah. couldn't do it either. I like I know CGC as an older company. I started reading comics in like the early two thousands and they've been around since at least then. Wada has not been around for that long. Mm -hmm. They are they have only been around like within the last ten years. Less than that, I would say. And they basically came around to do basically the same thing uh, that they that CGC does with comics, but for video games. I, I know that they, I don't know if they had a booth at too many games, like the last two years, but there is a booth that yeah. only has like a handful of really high, like rare, high graded games. Yeah. Uh, so I guess this company is trying to be the CGC of, of video games. This could potentially be marketing for WADA, not Heritage. Or maybe I wouldn't be surprised if it two. is. I wouldn't be surprised if it is. Honestly, because like, I think WADA really wants people to get in on the whole grading games. Mm -hmm. You know, which... You know, part of me is like, I don't think it works that way. Like, you can't take something that applies to comic books and just apply it to video games. Because when you when you CGC grade a comic, the thing you're you're protecting is the paper, which is the comic. Mm -hmm. When you do that with a game, the thing you're protecting is the plastic shell and like the cardboard. But that's not the game. The game is the software inside of it. Right. So it's not really analogous to each other. So another problem is that, like, I mean, these are sealed. So, like, yeah, like you, <laughs> it, it's a, it's a Schrodinger's cat situation. How, you're never gonna open it, but you yeah. need to know that it's in there. You know. <laughs> yeah. How do you know? I mean, they weigh it and maybe they X-ray it, but. How do you know somebody just didn't get a really nice looking box of Mario 64 and put freaking, uh, I don't know, like like 1080 snowboarding in there? Yeah. I don't know. It, it, it's, it, I have a lot of questions. But the biggest one is why the fuck is such a high, such a very, very popular game being sold for this much? You can't, I, yeah, you I, can't tell me that in, what, seven months time... From January to now, and full point four points from nine point four to nine point eight. You can't tell me that brings some the value of something from thirty eight thousand to one point five million. That doesn't make any yeah. sense. That's that's crazy. I just want to say real quick, I'm 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 on the CGC website, and one of their banner things is they are looking to hire somebody. Um, to basically lead their video game division. Oh boy! So, uh, so, so they even have no they're idea getting, what they're doing. <laughs> but, we, but they're looking into it. They're not just jumping into it and like you know starting seal games and like just randomly naming prices. And again, CGC has been around for years, decades. Um, they're trying to do this right. Meanwhile, I'm on Wada's website. And the first, the front page had a picture of Bruce Lee and it said, uh, we're experiencing high volumes of traffic right now. Oh, I could imagine. I mean, they're very popular right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, don't buy any games right now. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Uh, be <laughs> sus of every freaking. I mean, it is, it's rough out there. Even buying, uh, just regular old used games. The market is insane. It's it's everything's yeah. expensive. Um but if you got some collectors items, uh they're gonna catch a pretty penny.
And good luck trying yeah. to catch a pretty penny because you pretty much got, like you can't just go on eBay and sell something. You might get screwed. You gotta like get. This is a weird time right now. I gotta find it. My friend, a friend of mine, sent me. He had the Funko Land price chart from like way back in the day, mm -hmm. and the original Super Mario Brothers on that price chart was like fifty cents <laughs> to buy. Yep. And if you and now Super Mario, the original Super Mario Brothers, like people are gonna want hundreds of dollars for it. Yep. And like that's that's what I'm talking about. That's what bothers me. Is that you're turning game collection into you know a, a sport for the one percent. You know, <laughs> you're you're taking something that was for everyone and you're making it for only an elite few. And I don't think that's right i don't think that's fair um i think that's dangerous i think it's dangerous and i think it can lead to like a, a collapse because when this shit happened with comics in the 90s it almost bankrupted marvel it did mm. bankrupt marvel so i think that that's, think what, we're, that's what we're that's we're looking happen. for why would so. it if it drives the price of comics up how would it bankrupt marvel it drives the price of comics up on the secondary market mm -hmm not the direct market. And what happened was companies specifically uh, Marvel but also, you know, Image and DC and everyone else, they would put out new number ones every other month, special edition covers, everything was a uh, was an event and they would just flood the market with it to the point where people caught on and stopped buying it because the comics were shit and the and... only ones the only people who did buy it were people buying all of them. And Anyone. not touching yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so. I see that. Um, so, yeah. Don't uh, uh, don't buy games right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that being said, I'll see you guys at Too Many Games this year at, in Philadelphia. Uh, there you go. If you want to buy some games. <laughs> um, we got some more notifications here. We got Spoopy Girl with another billion gifted subs. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, they gifted a sub to uh, Patches McGee to make them happy. Oh, uh, there you go. We got another Swoopy Girl gifting more subs. We got J Buggy with 44 months. Wolf Bros, yo, what up? How you doing? We got yo. Game to Stay Sane. Thank you for the host. And Edward Boba, thank you for the host. J Buggy, uh, he commented on this week's main channel video saying, hey, if you want to see these videos early, like I did, make sure you're part of the Discord, uh, the supporter Discord. And I pinned the comment, and all of the com replies to him were like, "What a what a shilly ad! What did you get paid to do this?" And like shit, I was like, "Whoa, uh oh, you're just being nice." What the hell? Yeah. Uh. Anyway, uh, next news. Yes. Let's talk about the OLED switch. There's, there's been, okay. some, there's, we all know about it. I, we talked about it last week. There's a new, I posted a video about it last week. Also, um, there's really not much to talk about, but yeah, there's... in the past week, some notable things came out about it. That might so these are just some odds and ends that, uh, that are important to bring up with the yes. OLED Switch, formerly known as the Switch Pro or the Super Switch or the new Nintendo Switch or anything you wanted to call it, other than what it actually was. Some people were really interested to see if they could just buy the dock because the dock is cool. It's got, a, it's got an Ethernet cable in it. Um, yes. It's got the same exact internals aside from that Ethernet port. Just just mm -hmm. the USB 3.0 port was replaced with an Ethernet port. So if you have yeah. a friggin' LAN adapter, you, you the dock is basically the same. It's just a little cooler looking. Um, you'll be happy to know, though, if you're at all interested, uh, the OLED's new dock can be purchased separately. The current dock can also be purchased separately sometimes. I think it's been <laughs> discontinued for a while. And yeah. It's hard. It's kind of... Sometimes it shows up refurbished, but not often. So... Uh, that might happen with this one too. Um, it should it, be noted, though, that the the OLED dock can only is only being sold through Nintendo's online store. 
Right. Well, same thing with the the current doc. It was only being sold well, on. The current doc used to be sold in regular stores and like Target and stuff. They're com- oh, right out of the that. gate. Right out the gate, they're saying this will only be sold on Nintendo's online store, and it will just be the dock. No HDMI uh, cable, no AC adapter. That is dumb. Uh, yeah. I could have sworn this is only on Nintendo's website, the, the current dock. Well, now it is. But you used to be able to buy the current dock in other stores, and it would come with an HDMI cable and an AC adapter. Yes, and the AC adapter is incredibly important. If you're buying yeah. an if you're buying an additional dock, you want another AC adapter. What's the point of buying an like the whole cool yeah. thing about having two docks is like if you like have like like somewhere to go, a vacation house, maybe you're off at college and you want one for home. Um, yeah. If you're going to get another dock, you need an AC adapter with it. And you definitely for the love of Jesus Christ, don't want to get a Nintendo dock and an aftermarket AC adapter. That's yeah. a recipe for disaster. Um, and the dock's going to be expensive. Also, they I'm pretty sure they say that you can use uh, the current switch in this dock and vice versa, but um, yeah. this looks slightly wider. So that seems like a problem. Mm. Because the Joy-Cons would get stuck. It must not be that much wider, but it's definitely yeah. wider. I mean, it uh, it is confirmed that it's interchangeable. You can use new and old switches in both docks. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the internals are essentially the same. Yeah. Uh, the newly announced Nintendo Switch OLED comes packaged with a redesigned TV dock, which includes a wired LAN port and rounded corners. It comes in either black or white, depending on which OLED model players buy. In a statement to Digital Trends, Nintendo confirms that people who don't want to buy the new system will be able to pick up the standalone dock. Quote, the white dock and black dock will be sold separately. No HDMI cables, no AC adapter, not in a package. Not in a package? I guess that just means they won't be together. Um, On the Nintendo online store, it will not be sold at retail. Uh, Nintendo tells digital trends. This means it won't be available through retailers like Amazon or Best Buy. Those who want to get one will have to go through Nintendo directly. The company did not reveal how much the standalone dock will cost or when it will be available to purchase. If it doesn't have, I mean, if it came with the charger and an HDMI cable, I would say a hundred dollars, but now I don't know. Yeah. For comparison. I mean, it might still, because the old dock sold for $90 with everything. Mm -hmm. So this might be, they might still try to charge you a lot of money and say the, uh, the ethernet port is because it's that much. (laughs) I'll go ahead and say 80. For comparison, yeah. Nintendo sells the current Switch dock with no cables included through its website for 60. Does it now? The company also offers refurbished Switch docks for 40 with a 90-day limited warranty. I was all telling everybody all to get the friggin' uh, refurbished dock. That's a good deal. $40, yeah. but it doesn't come with anything. Uh, mm-hmm. According to The Verge, the old and new docks are interchangeable, so players can use the OLED dock with a regular Switch model. That's good news for players who want to who want access to wired internet, but don't want to shell out for a new console. I feel like it'll work, but there's going to be a little bit of overlap between the Joy-Cons and where it connects. It's going to be weird looking. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to be anything, anything too damning, you know? No, it's. I mean, I think this switch is only like a few millimeters wider. Yeah. Just enough to make it not work with certain case accessories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So there's that. The dock will work, and they're going to sell it separately if you just want the dock for whatever reason. Yeah. But expect to pay a pretty penny for it. Uh, but there's more LED, OLED news. Um, for example, we know that the Joy-Cons are exactly the same. Uh, we've, I mean, they look like it, and Nintendo even said that they're the exact same Joy-Cons. Uh, but then you got people like The Verge, who are like, hey, uh, does that mean a Joy-Con drift? Well, I mean... Yeah, no, it's a valid thing to say. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo said uh, to them, I think. 
In a statement Nintendo provided to Wired, Polygon, GameStop, and The Verge, the company said that the Joy-Con controller configuration and functionality did not change with the Nintendo Switch OLED model. But we didn't ask about the configuration or functionality as it was pretty much, as it was pretty clear from Nintendo's announcement that the controllers would be the same. We asked about drift, which is a reliability issue. And when we asked the question again in an even clearer fashion, we were referred to the previous statement. So basically what they're saying is um, they know that it's it's more or less the same controller as before. The Joy-Cons are, are unchanged. What they're asking is if they figured out how to fix the drift issue. And Nintendo is dodging the question. So the full all they're state... saying it all they're Go saying ahead. is it's the same thing. <laughs> the the full statement is the configuration and functionality is the same as that of the Joy-Con controllers of the Nintendo Switch console. At Nintendo, we take great pride in creating quality products. <laughs> And we are continuously making improvements to them. We are aware of reports that some Joy-Con controllers have not responded correctly. We want our customers to have fun with the Nintendo Switch. And if anything falls short of the, this goal, we always encourage them to visit support.nintendo.com so we can help. Which is a great way of saying we know that our Joy-Cons are broken. <laughs> uh, Shut they up. Will leave us alone. We're continue to be broken. being sued for it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We legally yeah. cannot say anything, and we have no intention to fix it. Yeah. At least, you know, I, we always seem to equate the Joy-Con drift issue with uh, the Red Ring of Death, which was a very egregious uh, yeah. technical issue that the Xbox 360 had, where I think now close to 100% of original Xbox 360s uh, are victims of the Red Ring of Death. Yeah. Um, so Microsoft fixed this with an iteration, a mid mid cycle iteration. Uh, they they got rid of the red ring of death. It turned into the red yeah. dot of death, but yeah. uh, it was uh, but it was less common, much less common. Nintendo just created a mid cycle iteration, knowing full well that they have uh, an issue with the Joy Cons, and they decided we're selling too many of these. We don't need to fix that. <laughs> Very strange. I mean, Microsoft was selling a shit ton of three sixties. Yeah. I don't know, though, because I feel like the Red Ring of Death is a little different from Joy-Con Drift. In what way? Because, like... It totally ruins the console and everything on it? <laughs> yeah, because the Red Ring of Death... Because, like, Joy-Con Drift, like, you have to... Like, ca like you cause it yourself from using your Switch. It's degrading over time. Mm -hmm. The Red Ring of Death would just happen because Microsoft made a bad system. <laughs> That's just... Because they didn't put enough... They didn't put enough thermal paste on like the CPU or whatever. Yeah. I don't think you can yeah. fix it by putting the like good thermal paste on it though. I think that's just putting a band-aid on it, you know? So I think it's I've still going to happen. I've seen repair kits on like I fix it in other websites that that say that this is what uh can fix a red ring of death. But the disclaimer on it is almost as long as the page itself. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, cannot guarantee this is like a one in a million chance. We've done it on we've done it on a few uh, test machines and it worked, but your results could vary, blah, 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 and all this other stuff. I mean, the red ring happens after you use it, but also, I mean, if it's old, especially by now, right. it might just be like that. <laughs> well, some I have a friend with a launch 360, and according to him, it still works. Whereas we had one that was like a few years later and that red ring within like two years. Yeah. So. Uh, it, while you were playing Assassin's Creed. While I was playing Assassin's Creed 2, yeah. I, I think I called you when it happened. <laughs> you did. We had a lot of Xbox 360s. We had three. We had four. We had four, yeah. One of them, one, one of them was yours specifically. Yeah, I put one in my room specifically just to play Call of Duty in like the middle of the night. Yeah. Uh, and then I traded that in for a DS Lite. No, I traded the DS Lite in for that because there's some yeah. like promotion. And then I traded that in, I think, for the newest one that we have. The Star uh, Wars one. Yes. But uh, the, the point is uh, that uh, Microsoft did something to fix it. Nintendo's like, nah, they'll still buy this thing. Yeah. I, I remember uh, my friend at the time worked at the UPS store and most of the packages 
that he had to ship out were Xbox 360s getting repaired. Really? Yeah, that's how frequently that problem was happening and how many people bought wow. an Xbox 360 at the time. Yeah. Uh, and he used to just steal them because they were all insured by Microsoft. So he would just steal the Xboxes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, so expect drift is what we're saying on the OLED switch. If that's yeah. a concern to you, uh, you're going to get it. You're going to get the drift. Um, I, uh, to be complete, to be perfectly clear, I have still never experienced Joy-Con drift. However, I barely play with Joy-Cons. I have a billion Joy-Cons. The only issue I have is one of my Joy-Con, the buttons, some of the buttons don't work. Um, but I've never drift. I have, dr have had drift. I've had experience with drift and a friend of mine, uh, experienced Joy-Con drift. I primarily play in handheld. So that's why I experienced it. I don't know why it happened to my friend, but he had to send his Joy-Cons away as well. Uh, I can say Nintendo's very good. Um, you send it out, you get your Joy-Cons back within a week or two. It's not a big deal. Uh, and it's free. Like, they know this is a problem, and they're willing to fix it for you at no cost to you. So that's very good on them. Uh, the last thing... Um... So the internals of the OLED switch are exactly the same as the current switch, mm -hmm. which people are disappointed about. Um, you don't get any like spec bumps besides the screen. Uh, but an interesting note here, there's dev kits for the OLED switch and they have an extra two gigabytes of RAM. What's that about? Uh, retail units stick with the usual four. Uh, this is according to NintendoEnthusiast.com. Uh, they were friends of the show. I don't know if they are. <laughs> <laughs> uh who wrote this i don't know uh on tuesday nintendo lifted the curtain on the nintendo switch oled model which received mixed reactions the majority of nintendo fans were expected were expecting a quote nintendo switch pro and expressed disappointment with the lack of improvements if you are someone who plays your S nintendo switch in handheld the oled model will be the definitive way to play though However, Digital Foundry has interestingly discovered that the Nintendo Switch OLED model development kit feature, features 8 gigabytes of RAM compared to the regular model's 6 gigabytes of the regular dev kit. Although the OLED okay, dev kit yeah. features 8 gigabytes, the all the all retail Switch units will continue to include only 4. Okay. This this is a little confusing. The 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 retail Switch that you have at home is yes. four gigabytes the mm -hmm. dev kit for the original switch is six gigabytes so it's two gigabytes more the oled dev kit is eight gigabytes which is four gigabytes more than all of the retail nintendo switches um apparently standard switch and switch oled are so fundamentally the same internally that games will not even recognize which model they are put on. However, developers still need a way to properly test their games on the new screen. So Digital Foundry explained the following, quote, with that in mind, a new ADEV development model is being made available to coexist alongside the existing SDEV and EDEV versions. For reasons undisclosed by Nintendo, the machine ships with 8 gigabytes of onboard memory compared to the 6 gigabytes in the other development models and the 4 gigabytes of all retail units. Digital Foundry continued to predict why it's unlikely a Pro model will be released anytime soon. Uh, quote, with the Switch approaching four and a half years in the market, it now seems almost certain that Nintendo will not deploy a mid-generation refresh in the in the mold of the DSi or the new 3DS and its offshoot models. This is the mid-generation refresh. This is it. <laughs> but it's not a, they mean like a spec bump refresh. Right, I understand. Like uh, the DSi and the... However, Nintendo is extremely unpredictable and there's no knowing what is planned for the future. In any case, it looks like the extra RAM included on the OLED model dev kit won't make much difference. But it will give developers more room to properly experiment. Will you be picking up a Nintendo Switch OLED model? Blah, 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 blah. A lot of people have been saying that uh, there's all these conspiracy theories like maybe Nintendo um, was going to make a Switch Pro 
and they decided not to because the current switch is selling so much. Um, this kind of uh, gives some credit to that theory because maybe they did want to put some extra RAM in there and the dev kit is to compensate for that. And they mm. were just like, screw it, we'll just give the dev, we'll just give them, we'll just give them the extra RAM, see what happens. Um, but I don't know. I, th I think uh, I think Nintendo knows that that they don't need to do too much to this mid-cycle iteration because they're already selling a butt ton. Yeah, I think at this point, um, if if Nintendo didn't release like a 4K or a Pro version of the Switch now, they're not going to release one. You know, we're going to have to wait till like the true next version, like the next generation Nintendo system, the Switch 2 or something with a completely different name to get an actual upgrade. Yeah, yeah. We're, uh, this is all we're getting for, for at least two to three yeah. years. Um, that being said, I have no idea why they would give an extra four gigabytes of memory for the for the dev kit. That's that's a lot. Well, it's no, double. dev kits generally have more uh, power in them so that they can then properly scale the games down to fit the system. That's a lot, though. Why would they give it so much more? Just to make sure, I don't know. I don't fucking know. I'm not a developer. <laughs> I don't know. I all I know is that dev kits are generally more powerful than retail right. uh, systems, so that they can first try to get the game to work and then scale it down to what a retail version of the system would be. Maybe they're just doing it because uh, they want some. Uh, they want ports to work better. Like they they want they want uh, devs to be more comfortable porting stuff. Maybe that's why. Maybe right. Maybe they they they're redoing the dev kit so they got feedback from some devs and we're like, well, okay, we can give you what you guys need. Uh, yeah. That's that's also potential. It's whatever the case. It's probably the answer is probably something really stupid that that doesn't matter too much. Um. Anyway, that's it. That's all the OLED switch news. The OLED the OLED switch uh not very exciting and uh the news coming out of it uh isn't very exciting compared to what you already heard last week so uh don't expect too much about yeah. the all led switch until it finally comes out in october um anyway uh hey cs anderson thank you for the one bit uh next you have an article on here 10 games for newbies why why do you have this so one? i saw this and i figured it would be like a, a nice little just a quick discussion between two bros and our esteemed uh, watchers over here on twitch.tv slash wolfden. Because I saw this list. Uh, game 10 games for newbies. And a lot of these games are like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> but it, it, so it begs the question because people always ask, you know, what, what's a good game to introduce to somebody who's never played games before? Uh, it's a question that I'm asking myself when my child turns of age. What games do I introduce to her right away? Um, so this list interests me. Um, but the games on this list, I don't really think are good games to introduce. I, I want to... game... Uh, hold on. Yeah, I, the, the title, the, the, the first cover image is The Last of Us Part Two. I yes. have a defense for this. Because this game, at first glance, is not a good game for newbies. Right. One anecdotal thing. Our friend Mike doesn't play any video games. This is the only game that he plays is The Last of Us and then now The Last of Us 2. So he's a good example. But I, this game has a I lot will, of ex accessibility. That's uh, what I was going to say. Th this game has a lot of... like the you can the the difficulty settings of this are very modular and you can set it to exactly how you want to play right so you could you can play with tough enemy ai but also play with um max ammo if you want so right. it's it's very forgiving for people who have who aren't very good at games who've never really played a video game before yeah, so, so I, I will defend and, the the Last of Us. I still don't think yeah. this is going to be the first game I think of when somebody's trying to get into video games. I don't think I would say no. the Last of Us, but at least it has good accessibility options. Yes, yes. This, I mean, maybe if they're into like just dark shit. Mm -hmm. you know, Do I have, like, I have to watch a slideshow on Lifehacker? Are you kidding me? 
yeah they they redid like the all the all the the gawker kinja websites like redid their listing and so it's to get not to get great. fucking ad revenue this is stupid yeah because the click throughs you go to more pages it's dumb the first yeah. game on here is dragon quest 11 s definitive edition no no way that's what i mean like the dragon quest games are you know first of all they're jrpgs which are not easy to get into i don't care what anyone says they're not it's you know, a billion second hours off, long yeah you know it's it's the 11th game and i know that they don't like connect with each other in any way shape or form but you know at this point if you're not already playing a dragon age game you're you're not going to jump into the 11th one a uh, sight unseen this seems like this guy who wrote this just likes dragon quest maybe the game smartly provides a previously on recap segment every time you boot up oh that's pretty good if you're not sure what to do next chat with your party members to seek out the clearly marked npcs okay so maybe but still i wouldn't I, this wouldn't be the first game i think of either yeah hitman 3 now you would know more about this than me well so here's the thing if you think about it yes this is actually a, a decent game for uh beginners because it's it's very go at your own pace it's it's kind of relaxing in a lot of sense it's, it's more laid back you have to think about what you're doing you have to plan what you're doing you have time to think about and plan what you're doing and you, and you tackle uh, however you want exactly the difficulty especially on like the lowest difficulty setting is very forgiving um but that said the problem with the hitman games it's it's the type of game where if you screw up your best course of action is to just quit the game and restart hmm. because it's very difficult to get back to you know the the no alert state um and you know there it also throws surprises at you at least in hitman 2 the whole game was very, you know, like I said, go at your own pace. It's very calm. You think about what you do. You take your time with it. But then all of a sudden, I was stuck in a situation where I only had five minutes to take out my target and his guard and then get out of the house before before the guy came back to verify my ID. And, like, stressful situations like that, I can see, like, putting off newcomers to games. Mm -hmm. So I would say I would put an asterisk on this. Because I don't know if this... I mean, it's a good idea. But I would say like maybe this would be like their second or third game. All right. Next is Skyward Sword. What the fuck? <laughs> and this... So this is why I wanted to put it on the list. Because he specifically says Skyward Sword HD. Which at <laughs> the time of this recording is not out yet. Right. Well, are reviews up? No. No, reviews aren't up. No. Uh... No. So there, Nintendo has been saying a lot about how they streamlined this game. They made it way easier, and it's way easier to follow, which is a big complaint yeah. to a lot of people. So I understand why he would say this. But Breath of the Wild is probably the first game I would think of when somebody wants to get into games. I think Breath yeah. of the Wild might be on the top of my list for somebody who wants to get into video games. Yeah, because so, that is 100% go at your own pace. If Breath of the Wild isn't on this list, I'm going to be very upset. It, uh, spoiler alert, it's not. <laughs> That's so fucking stupid. Why would you put this game on here and not Breath of the Wild? You don't even, I didn't play, I I didn't even play this game before. I, I mean, maybe he played the Wii version. The only thing I can think of is... But that is, version sucks. This is, the only th reason I can think of putting this on the game because it's the last of the Zelda games that like kind of tell you where to go, whereas mm -hmm. Breath of the Wild doesn't. Yeah, but, but th I think that's, that's the best part of Breath I, of the Wild is that you exactly. can do whatever you want in the game and everything helps get you to the end. And that's why I hate every other Zelda game is because yeah. you have to do a specific set of things to get to the end and the game doesn't really do a good job of telling you what to do. Uh, yeah. it, they're saying in this, it's a much more linear game compared to Zelda titles, emphasizing puzzles and dungeons over exploring the wilderness, especially compared to its direct follow-up Breath of the Wild. Also, Skyward Sword's storyline is a prequel and technically the starting point of the series' overall continuity, so you won't be missing anything if this is your first Zelda. Um, I still would... I, I would still recommend Breath of the Wild. 
I think this is a weird one to put on here, especially because the also, game isn't I, fucking out yet. <laughs> also, I want to just point out, Skyward Sword, while yes, it is officially the first game in the Zelda timeline, that doesn't fucking matter because <laughs> the Zelda timeline changes with every game that gets put out. And also, and does it make sense? <laughs> it doesn't. And with very few exceptions, the events of one game do not bleed into the next. Yeah, and it's, so really, it's that, really completely that should irrelevant. not have been a bullet point. That should not have been a bullet point. All right, we're we're moving on before I get up more people yeah. mad. The Last of Us, we talked about this. I'm skipping it. Yeah. Um, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. <laughs> are you? Are this guy trying to troll us now? I think so. I mean, this. Uh, I will, it, you know what? I'm gonna give him credit. This game is incredibly easy to follow along and figure out what's happening. And it's, it's it's you could take it at your own pace. It's turn based, you know, whatever. But yeah, of all the games on the planet, <laughs> why in God's name are you picking this one? I mean, uh, in terms of like a tactical game, this is probably the easiest tactical game to get into. But Pokemon, it's, it's Pokemon. It's, Unless we're well, not counting yeah, as tactical. But that, it's still it's still got RPG elements to it. You still got to know like a hundred different you know combinations of rock paper scissors. Bro, I was eight. So playing playing that. True. Crushing it. True. Get me out of here. Uh, S S Fi El Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Um, I'll, you know what? I'll I'll give this a maybe. I mean, this is clearly just somebody's favorite game that they just put on the list. <laughs> but I will say that it is actually relatively easy to figure out what to do in this game. Yeah. Um, you know, as long as you have $600 to buy it, as we've learned. <laughs> so I played this game way after it came out. Um, and mm -hmm. I was actually surprised to see how uh, simple it was to figure out. I thought I was going to be, I thought I was going to be completely overwhelmed and I really wasn't. So uh, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll give, I'll give this one to him. Um, slime rancher it's a weird one this i feel like is uh i mean it's more of like a kid-friendly shooter right so i guess 1.3 million copies sold damn good for them damn i haven't played this i can't comment on this maybe yeah uh, but i you know this wouldn't have been on my list this is weird yeah i'm sure it's easy to figure out uh okay now we right. are talking yeah this is a bit more like it <laughs> this is super mario 3d land uh world super mario world. 3d world they they, they fucked up <laughs> at the top it says super right. mario 3d land plus black bowser fury right. the game is but called super mario 3d world plus bowser to be fair super mario 3d land also not a bad choice <laughs> Also not a bad choice. Good luck trying to play that now, Will. You got to buy point. yourself a 3DS. Uh, but Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Fantastic choice for a newbie. Very easy. Uh, I mean, some of the shit might be a little hard, but you don't have to do that stuff. Yeah. You just play the main yeah. stuff. Uh, and you can play with friends. Very easy. This game has two buttons. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, uh, totally. I'm 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 all for it, and it's very high on the list. Is this in order, or is this just randomly ten games? I think it's just randomly. Okay, well I'm on board so, with them for this one. Until dawn. Yeah. So uh, here's the thing: until dawn, it's like one of those. It's like a heavy rain type game where it, it's less like Twitch based video game and more of like you're you're watching a cutscene and you react to the button prompts on screen. Mm. I feel like that's not a bad thing to recommend to somebody who doesn't play games or like has never played a game before. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's a it's probably much more easier to get your head around, you know, watch the movie and press the button when they tell you to. Yo, the frame rate is trash my on only, this trailer. Right. <laughs> my only thing is, you know, I don't. Until Dawn is explicitly a horror game. Mm -hmm. And that's not everybody's cup of tea. So first you have to know that your friend or whatnot is into horror, specifically slasher horror, and then show them this. 
Yeah, I'm uh, pretty much if somebody asks, if somebody comes to me and says, I don't play video games, what should I play? I'm going to base my choice around what I think of the person. Yeah. Um, somebody in the chat keeps talking about Animal Crossing. Uh, that is a great choice for somebody who doesn't play games. Yeah. Oh, I know a lot of people, even back during New Leaf, a lot of people were, that was the only game they played. Um, but it's a very specific type of person. You know, maybe somebody is into yeah. horror they might want until dawn yeah i mean if they're not if they're not and they want to play a game like this if they're into you know detective stories then there's heavy rain um if they're into batman there's the telltale batman games they're very similar to this um so yeah i don't i don't think this is a bad choice i just think that it's a choice that needs some more thought to it the this next one yakuza like a dragon get out of here it's like a really complex rpg isn't it I don't I don't think it's complex. I just think it it's bizarre. Right. It's just very bizarre. Well, so actually it's, it's his Yakuza I, series. Yeah. So so like maybe a dragon not. is the most recent one. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh the first seven Yakuza games and their remakes are real time action games, but the affable characters, heaps of side quests, and complex yet surprisingly goofy at times stories set in the world of Japanese organized crime are much closer in style to the narrative driven representation of most RPGs. I'm gonna these are great games, so I hear, and they're very interesting. I've always wanted yeah. to try one. Um again, not at all wouldn't be anywhere close to the top of my list for games for yeah new I, I would definitely try. say like this is a more like intermediate thing you know yeah because just because it is so like different because you look at yakuza and you think it's going to be the japanese answer to grand theft auto and for the most part it is but it, it does a lot of other weird wacky shit yeah well that i don't think weird wacky shit try. right now it's yes exactly uh, that's another thing like i like i i want the world to experience metal gear you know yeah because we love metal gear but that is so hard to explain to somebody that doesn't play video games because there's a lot of no, weird yeah. stuff and a lot of the humor just doesn't make any sense yeah and yakuza does the same thing like like with with this with this random like i don't know he looks like he's in a daycare center and there's adults in diapers like yeah this is a very at times this game is very serious and then it does weird wacky shit like this and yeah that might just be a japanese thing it might not be a video game thing but like uh if there's a newcomer this is it's gonna be weird it's gonna be weird yeah <laughs> um so yeah i don't i don't this wouldn't have been at the top of my list um, the yeah. last one. Oh, there is no way. That was the last one. Uh, yeah, that was the last one. Yeah. So what would be so, the game if there was a newcomer? I mean, again, I would base it off of what I think of the person, like what I think they would enjoy. Yeah. But otherwise, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm I not default sure. to like, I would default to like a 2D Super Mario Brothers game. Mm hmm. Just so that they understand like the basic concept of what a video game is, and then build from there. I Maybe think like 3D was... Land is or 3D World is a good option. Uh, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think Mario Odyssey even, even though that's 3D. And yeah. Oh, I was, out how well, to I was gonna say like two sticks, but I still think that's once they good. figure out 2D, like a 3D Mario would be a good introduction to 3D next, and then you know I don't know from there. Breath of the Wild also. Like, yeah. I, I think newcomers have a have a really hard time with uh, dealing with twin sticks, whether it be uh, third yeah. person or first person. Um, I, I know when I've seen newcomers grab a controller for like a first person shooter, the first thing they do is spin around in a circle and shoot the, at the sky because they don't understand yeah. how both sticks work. Um, Daniel in the chat says Minecraft, so that's also a good option. Um, Minecraft is good. I do uh, appreciate the idea of giving them a 2D game first, uh, but yeah, honestly, I think throwing somebody in the deep end isn't a bad idea. Like, if somebody wants to get into no. games, they should really just pick up whatever game they're interested in. True. Uh, Hannah says, newcomers are going to go try to fight Ganon immediately and never get past that part. No. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I mean... 
it, they do make it pretty clear in the beginning that that's the bad place. Yeah, don't go there. You know that. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it. It could even a lot. There's a lot of things that happen between. If you want to go straight to Gaddon, there's a lot that happens between the starting point and Gaddon. So you could, you yeah. could potentially spend a few hours just walking over there. Yeah. Um. But anyway, yeah, I think it, it entirely depends on what they're uh, what they're interested in. But otherwise, Minecraft's a good option. Even Animal Crossing is a good option. Um, Animal Crossing. Uh, um, any, any Mario game. Uh, Breath of the Wild, maybe Skyward Sword HD, but we don't even know yet. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of. Well, well there's a game that's that... Tetris, but yeah, well, that's an obvious. One. Oh yeah, Tetris, Bejeweled, like puzzle games. I think are good options. Um, there's a game that we're going to talk about a little later that might be a good game for newcomers, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, yeah, I think I think there are there are definitely options out there. I just think that whoever wrote that list didn't think it through. <laughs> yes, they just put games that they like. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Disc Juice says the perfect game for newcomers is Mine Sweeper. There you Not go. Wrong. Yeah. Goes to Gordy with twelve months, one year. Wahoo! Happy anniversary, Wolf Bros. Thank you very much. Enjoy Thank your, you. what, gold wolf head? I don't know. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's plow through some more stories. Uh, do we yeah. want to talk? Let's talk real quick about this million dollar Mario smartwatch. Not literally a million dollars. It's $2,150. Uh, this oh, was, yeah. It's a... This was The Verge. It's a lot uh, of money. It is a lot yeah. of money. A few days ago, Tag Hewer. I've never heard of them before. <laughs> Power, I think. Posted a teaser for a Super Mario themed watch. You might have assumed that a Swiss made mechanical timepiece was in the works, but now the news is out. It's actually a limited edition version of Tag's connected Wear OS smartwatch. Ew. Tag Hauer seemingly hasn't released details itself yet. Its website is still counting down to the July 15th. Let me go to the website. Yep. One day's. Oh, it's got it's got a little Mario on it. That looks so dumb. Um, Wahoo! <laughs> but Engadget, TechCrunch, and World Tempest have all posted stories with the device's key features. The hardware itself appears to be identical beyond some light cosmetic tweaks to the 50, uh, 45 millimeter case, including an M for Mario logo on the crown. And it comes with two straps, one with perforated red rubber alongside, one with red rubber and black leather. Let me see that again. Ooh, that is fancy. Oh, I see it. That is fancy. The watch is said to use a gamification reward system with greetings <laughs> from Mario and Mushroom Kingdom themed animations that play as you hit various steps, goals throughout the day. There are four new Mario Watch faces, including a timekeeping face that features retro elements from the 1985 version of Super Mario Bros. with Mario all in pixels. That's one way to word that. As opposed to the physical steel that other smartwatch faces are cast from, presumably. Uh, uh, That's all I'm going to say other than it is uh, going to be $2,150. And they're only making 2,000 models. Tag well, Hauer, I know. Yes. What? Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, Tag Hauer, they're, they're a company, like, they're like a Rolex or an Omega, where they do make watches that cost as much as a computer. Um, so th- them selling a $2,000 watch is not surprising. Them selling a two thousand dollar officially licensed Super Mario <laughs> Brothers watch, however, uh, that's surprising. I'm incredibly because, disappointed that this is a smart watch and not just a regular watch. I mean, look, man, you got to get with the times. It's it's literally it's smart watches are here. They're here to stay. It's just unfortunate that it's Wear OS, which. You know, this is this is not bias talking. It, it's been proven Wear OS is substantially shittier than Apple's uh, version of it on their end on Watch OS. <laughs> yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not happy about this, Will, but I might get it. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I might actually, I might actually Sorry. spend the money. It'll you make a good video. I don't want to wear it. I'll wear it in a suit, and that's ever at all when I'm ever going to wear it. Red is going to be ugly and not go with anything, but it'll make a good video. I'm going to need it a big fat a sponsor video. on it, uh, but <laughs> it will make a good video, and that's why I want it. So uh, I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy about losing $2,150. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, everybody, so that I can buy this one. Yes. And, uh, and then have it sit on a shelf. And then probably rot and never work again. Because after like 10 years, well, I suspect this thing won't turn on anymore. Well, I mean, uh, well, I don't know. Because like Tag Hauer, like, the, you know, their regular watches, those are built to last. Like the uh, Tag Hauer uh, Carrera Porsche Chronograph Special Edition... Which is six thousand and fifty dollars. This is so stupid. I, again, it would be a lot cooler if it was just a regular watch, but the fact that it's a smart watch is kind of makes it real dumb. I don't like it. Well, the thing is, like, like I said, they're they're a luxury watch brand, mm -hmm. so I don't think the people who would normally buy a Tag Heuer watch would buy a Tag Heuer Super Mario branded watch. <laughs> Because the people who buy a Super Mario Brothers watch are the same type of people who would wear a Mario Brothers t-shirt, who would have like at least a Mario Brothers plushie. You know, they are not the people who buy Tag Heuer watches. What are you talking about? Just, just, just saying. Uh, Spooby Girl, thanks for the 300 bits and instantaneous ramen. <laughs> Thank you for the Prime <laughs> subscription. Uh, let's plow through the state of play real quick. Now, I don't... Okay. You know, I, I co-stream the Nintendo Directs. Sometimes I'll co-stream uh, uh, an Xbox showcase if I deem it worthy and it's at a good time. I have not at all been streaming the PlayStation State of Plays because I know people think I'm biased against PlayStation, but they're always bad. They never have anything that's worth talking about. And they all also only ever have like three games. And it sometimes... There's nothing new about the games. Yeah. So. Uh, this article even agrees with you. Uh, the company <laughs> promised that there wouldn't be any big news, any big news at the event. But even so, it was a bit of a snooze fest. We got a smattering of new game announcements, release dates, and trailers, but nothing that fundamentally changed the outlook for games on the PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 in the second half of the year. So it really was just like, here's some stuff. Yay. Uh, that being said, the first thing uh, on here, Moss Book 2, looks good. I like the first game. I think that I think this is like the their like big surprise. And that's that that's good because Moss was a very good game. It's a very good PSVR game. Um that's that, unfortunately only in VR. <laughs> that being said, um in a world with PlayStation 5, this looks like a PS2 game. <laughs> It's not, I mean, it's a little unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that should be really good if you have a PlayStation VR. Uh, hopefully, yeah. come, the, the first one's on Oculus. It'd be nice if that was on uh -huh. Oculus because I, I have an Oculus and I, I, it's a pain in the ass yeah. to set up the PlayStation VR. Um, anyway. What else? Uh, next, we got Arcade Again, a new shooter. Um, from the people who made Predators, Predator Hunting Grounds and Friday the 13th, the game. Oh. It's basically their answer to Splatoon. <laughs> That's so weird. This looks nothing like those games. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, it's very cartoony looking, but it's a shooter. Yeah. It's like a straight up shooter. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. It's Sony Splatoon, basically. Hero shooter. So that means you can choose your character and stuff and the characters have yes. abilities. Very interesting. Okay. What else? Yeah, uh, they showed off more of uh, Tribes of Midgard, which, judging from this thumbnail, we might have a lawsuit on our hands. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. I got to refresh again. Yeah, I'm seeing this wolf logo too too much. You know, All right, this yeah. one, this Between... one, they get a pass. There's, that's pretty different. Uh, yeah, because they had like the Celtic thing. But you got you got Huskers and Crowder. They're two Call of Duty Twitch streamers, and the logos mm -hmm. look exactly like our logo. Yeah. But ours was first, so fuck you guys. Yeah. 
Um, isometric action game looks nondescript but pretty. Um, it's basically a Diablo style game. Uh, next was Fist Forged in Shadow Torch. Fist. Uh, it's oh, a side scroller where you play as a violent animal. <laughs> I remember this game. I don't remember. Like, yeah. I looked at the recap for the state of play. I don't remember any of these games. Yeah, right? That's what I mean. Like, it's... You know you saw the state of play, but you're like... <laughs> it's like I how did. I feel about Frozen... It's like how I feel about Frozen 2. I know I've seen it twice, but I can't tell you anything that happens in it. <laughs> I watched, like, a half of it, and then I looked at, a, at some recaps, and I don't remember anything about these. But I do remember yeah. hearing about this game a while ago. Um, still don't think I'm going to play this one. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Hunter's next Arena? Is... What? I don't remember these. <laughs> yeah. It's a Battle Royale game, apparently, because those are still oh, yes. in vogue. Uh, Sifu. They showed off more of that. That still looks very good, but it's been delayed till 2022. Yeah, they did a weird way of announcing that it was delayed. I mean, it. I'm. this is the only PlayStation game that's in these that I'm excited for. This one looks really cool. Yeah. Uh, so it has an interesting mechanic where every time you die, you age a few years. Yeah. So you can basically age until you're dead. And then you have to start the whole yeah. freaking game over. Um, but you don't lose any of your like strength as you get older, which is good. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> at the end of the trailer, like throughout the whole trailer, they see the guy die, like, like getting, like, like failing the mission. And then he ages like two years or three years, and you see like the little little age timer go up. And then at mm. the very end, when they show the title screen, they show 2021, and then it moves up to early 2022, just like how the age <laughs> does. And it's, it's 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 like a cute way of doing it, but it's also like a fuck you to everybody who's like interested. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's by the makers of Absolver. That makes a lot of sense. Absolver was yeah. that uh multiplayer arena style uh uh one v one third person fighting game yes um so this looks fun i'm interested uh next is jet the far shore which has not been delayed it is a moody sci-fi adventure from the makers of the spectacular uh super brothers sword and sorcery ep um and it's still on track to come out before the year's end i do like super brothers uh that game was really good uh this mm -hmm. is incredibly different so who knows I, i'm sure it's going to be good also but uh yeah. i don't think they've ever made a game like this so this uh this is interesting uh next is demon slayer kimetsu no yaiba the uh, hinokami chronicles of course based on the popular uh demon slayer anime that all the kids are into right that's all I know about it. Is there a person in that backpack? Is there? So I, th I saw a TikTok of like somebody in this cosplay, and then they had one of these like big wooden backpacks, and a person went in it, and he actually carried uh. the person around. <laughs> John got the juice. Says yes. Okay, this is a, <laughs> that's a strong man. There is that the person in there? Yeah. Never mind. Not so strong. I could do that. Oh, this is the anime with the pig man. Yeah. Anime games uh usually not great. They've been they've been getting a little better. I mean, Dragon Ball Fighter Z is still like played at tournaments and stuff, so. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh I hope it's good cuz the concept yeah. of an anime game like this is awesome. Uh but historically there this actually does look really good, but historically they haven't really been that good. Yeah. Total Warlock says, no, Bob, Jump Force was great. Yes. <laughs> Next is Lost Judgment. Lost Judgment. Um, this is uh, the sequel to the uh, Yakuza spinoff Judgment. It just showed off more of it. Uh, and then the Death Stranding Director's Cut, which wait, wait, Kojima wait. does not want you to... Sorry. Well, we have another story about Lost Judgment we could just get out of the way now. Oh, you want it? Okay, yeah, we can do that. It, it... So... Yeah, go ahead. Go. So to, to summarize it, Lost Judgment is the second game in the series of the Judgment spinoff series. And it might be the last game in the Judgment series because the agency that represents the lead actor in the game does not want it to be ported to PC. 
Interesting. Yes. Is is he the one that got fired for doing coke? No, I think he's the guy who replaced the guy who got fired for doing coke. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, according to site sources, Sega has been pushing for PC versions of the Judgment games, something Johnny and Associates, the talent and agency for the franchise's lead actor, Takuyami, Takuya Kimura, is against because it does not want Kimura to appear in PC games. The reasoning behind the company's rejection isn't quite clear, although Nikon Tashiyu uh, stated that Johnny and Associates has strict control over the likenesses, over the, over the likeness rights of its talent, and the use of their image online is still limited to a few. If, ne if neither the agency nor Sega is willing to budge on this issue, judgment and lost judgment will never come to PC, leaving the publisher to lose out on extra earnings it could pull from the additional platform. Uh, and in people, turn, it could mean the end of the Judgment spinoff series. People in the chat are saying it's it's probably because of mods. Um, it's also possible that maybe they just want more money to put it on PC, and Sega's like, we don't have that. Probably much. they're like, give those. No, we yeah. need more if you're going to publish it somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, you could say it's mods, but I feel like at this point, if you don't know what PC gaming is about you're probably in the wrong business. Yes. <laughs> Don't deal with video games. Uh, Kimura Takuya is also one of the biggest and longest standing stars. One of their biggest and longest standing stars. Yeah. Mimi memes. The, 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 the company or the, or the game? I think the talent agency because Judgment has not been around for lo very long. Johnny's is the biggest idol agency in Japan. They're very strict about a lot of things. Oh, that makes yeah. more sense. All right, next we got Death Stranding Director's Cut, which is a big deal. Uh, repping my boy yes. right now, Koj Koji Pro. Uh, Kojima doesn't want you to call it a Director's Cut, but it will add new story missions, combat mechanics, and a racing mode. It is a $10 upgrade from the PS4 version, and cross save will be supported. Ooh, I might do this. $10 upgrade. Good luck, with the, the good luck with the cross save. I know, Jesus Christ. Um, I, I, he doesn't want you to call it director's cut, probably because the original is the director's cut. Because he he, it's not like he, he said something like, anything. yeah, he yeah he said uh, something to the effect of, "I don't consider this a director's cut. I just I consider like you know a bonus feature more or less." Right. Yeah. Very cool. I might I might check it out. Um, yeah. Last is Death Loop, which I'm definitely gonna check out. I'm actually pretty excited yeah. for this. They showed off about like nine minutes of gameplay. Uh, yeah, it still looks fun. It still looks like Death Loop at this point. I think people just want to play the game. So yeah, this is like a, a Dishonored style combat, but uh, yeah, the biggest and most interesting like like hook is that while you're playing the game, uh, another real person player will spawn in and try to kill you while you're fighting all yeah. these NPCs. Uh that is a really cool mechanic that I'm interested in. So it's a it's a it, it's it's a single player game. You're playing against the the environment. Uh but then another character spawns in and tries to kill you. And it's it's it there's a story element. Like there's a reason why that happens and it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um so this one I'm actually pretty excited about. Uh also of note uh isn't uh arcane studios owned by uh microsoft now yes uh arcane studios which is owned by bethesda um was purchased by microsoft so that means this game was supposed to be a playstation 5 exclusive mm -hmm. and um and it's still going to be that at least at launch it will debut on xbox and pc a, a few months later i'm not sure the exact time frame uh but when it debuts on xbox it'll be in game pass very interesting. So yeah, I'm gonna wait until yeah. Game Pass. Why would I buy it? Yeah. Well, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I don't know. I thought I was gonna wait until October until when Black Widow would just be a part of my Disney Plus subscription. <laughs> but I might wind up paying thirty dollars to see it this week. I, I I do need some PlayStation Five games, and also, I mean, it, it would be interesting to stream when it comes out. That yeah. was PlayStation's one more thing, though. Uh, yeah, I gotta say, there's a lot more in this than I than I thought there was. But uh, nothing's really particularly it's, exciting. Yeah, it's still, they, they still doesn't have 
the play the play the state of plays just still don't have the same like razzum razzmatazz whatever you want to call it as like the Nintendo directs do. You yeah, know? The, the the only thing here that we didn't know about that is exciting is Moss Book Two, and yes, we didn't know about Death Stranding Director's Cut, but I mean the game already exists, so it does, doesn't matter. We knew about Death Loop, which was their big one more thing, <laughs> and yeah. we knew about uh Sifu, so uh whatever. Uh, let's plow through everything else because we are running late. Okay. Uh, but first, yeah. uh, Mega Dragon, thank you for the four months. Four months already? Wowzes. Thanks for dealing with me, bros. Thank you for being here. I always. Don't... Always. I... Seems like uh, it should have been longer. Nicktoons All Stars Brawl. This hit uh, yeah, the internet buddy. today pretty hard. Yep. Uh, look at that. Nickelodeon is making a Smash Brothers game. Nick. It... Just like you've always wanted. Uh, based on the trailer, it seems that the game will attempt to run the gamut of Nickelodeon roster uh, with older characters like Nigel Thornberry from the Wild Thornberries, Powdered Toastman from Ren and Stimpy, and Oblina from Ah Real Monsters, along with newer characters like Lincoln and Lucy Loud from The Loud House. Of course, other, standbo- other standbys like the cast of SpongeBob SquarePants and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles will also appear in the game, along with Danny Phantom, Invader Zim, Helga from Hey Arnold and Reptar from Rugrats. Where the hell is uh, Rocco? Mm. Well, it's, it's it says Rocco. the game the the game will include twenty Nickelodeon themed levels that will be playable in single or multiplayer. I'm assuming they're going to have more characters revealed down the road. I hope so. I mean, Maybe there's a lot be of DLC. great characters. There's a lot of great characters. Powdered yeah. Toast, man. You got it. Zim from Invader Zim. If you're a, if you're a hot topic person. Yes. <laughs> if you think you're edgy in 2004. Damn. This is oh, like I see it. That was just a dig at Small Dog Mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, Powder Toast Man, though, that is just Captain Falcon. He's even got the same punch, uh, uh, yeah, jab lock as Captain Falcon. So, uh, that's my guy, Powder Toast Man. How's his butt, though? Is his butt nice? I mean, Pat, if it's modeled after it is in Ren and Stimpy, it's gonna, he's gonna have a good butt. Um, yeah, and this, there's no way this game's gonna be great, but uh, I no. I want to try it. I think, but I think it, it'll it, be it, fun. At I least. feel like. You get the right amount of people. This this is going to be a good time. Yes, I'm. Ex- is, I mean, it just. I'm seeing a lot of people. Twenty-one, and it's Nintendo yeah. Switch, PlayStation Four, PlayStation Five, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X. So literally everything. I'm seeing a lot of people um, are excited for Danny Phantom being in the game. I am too. That is one of my favorite Nicktoons. It's great. Uh, I'm also excited that Leonardo is in the game because you forget that. The turtles are Nicktoons now, but I feel like you can't have just one Ninja Turtle in the game. You gotta have all also four. In the game. Michelangelo, you did see Michelangelo in the trailer. Yeah, see, I thought right. that was Raph. Yeah. yeah, there's a big M. I think all of so. them are in the game. Good, because they only showcase Leonardo. Here's here's Michelangelo. I'm showing you him right now on screen. Well, maybe I watched a different trailer. I think only Michelangelo and Leonardo are shown. I, okay. I don't remember seeing the other ones, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give it a try. It was pretty cool. Um, yeah. I don't again. I don't think it's gonna be great, but uh, it'll, be, it'll be fun for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know how Helga plays. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot, a lot of these characters don't make any sort of sense, but uh, no. No, but that's the fun of games like this. It's like right. when they put Phoenix Wright in Marvel vs. Capcom. He attacked you with his papers. Right. All right. Psychonauts 2. What's this about? Uh, it's going to have an invincibility toggle in the options menu by default. What? So that you can, you can turn it on and off. Depending on how you want to play the game. Games are supposed to be hard. I want to... I want a game to kick my ass. I want to be able to not play it. I want to get so frustrated <laughs> that I break my control. Yeah, I'm of 
two minds of this. I mean, I can't throw stones because I used to pl- I used to play games with the invincibility cheat on all the time when I was younger. Um, and you know, sometimes if I hate the game that much, I will still play it with a uh, invincibility cheat because sometimes it's the only way to play the game. Um, also, they're giving you the option up front. They're telling they're baking this into the game. So it's something that the developers want you to have if you need it. Um, that said, there still has to be some kind of a challenge to the game. Like there there should be like some difficulty to it if you're gonna put some invincibility in there. You know? Uh I think that they take a lot of pride in the uh in the story and 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 kind of like the journey of psychonauts of like playing through yeah. it. So I think they just really want you to be able to get through the game and and whatever yeah. whatever's going to help you get through it and have fun doing it. I think that they're they're cool with that. Um yeah. This this is a big controversy because of a uh, what happened a few months ago like there was a big uh, controversy over like uh difficulty in certain games or accessibility in certain games i I think some some journalists got mad that dark souls was as hard as it is or something i'm this is a this is a topic that like always comes up like when when demon souls first came out like there was talk like maybe this should have had an easy mode or games need to be you know more accessible And, and you'll find like situations where a, a, a journalist had trouble like play, playing a game at a at E3, and everybody criticized them because uh, oh, I thought game journalists were supposed to be good at games and things like that. And, and you have people saying like, if you use cheat codes or Game Genie, then you didn't play the game. If uh, Mike Matei of Cinemasker said, if you use a rewind feature in a retro collection, then you didn't beat the game because I, I... games are supposed to be played linearly. I kind of it's, it's this that. whole talk of like <laughs> it's this whole talk of like there's only one way to play a game and right. it's possible to play it wrong and I don't think that's fair mm-hmm. I think that the the point of a video game is to beat the video game and I think that as long as you're using the tools given to you by the game developers then anything is fair game and that includes you know, things like a rewind feature or an invincibility toggle or something well, like that. There, there's people with cognitive issues that would like to enjoy the game too. And some yes. of those people, it's just physically impossible for them to enjoy something like Dark Souls. I think that there is some value to having a game that's notoriously hard so that when you beat it, you feel really good about it. But uh, certain features that make it more accessible, like The Last of Us, for example, has some great accessibility options. Um, yeah. I think if that's the only way you can beat it, then uh, you should let people have their fun too, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, that being said, if there's something like uh, the rewind feature for retro games, like if you want to play freaking Ninja Gaiden and you're playing through that game with save states, you should have a big stamp on your achievement that says you did it with save states. You did it, but you did it with save states. No, no, I don't think yes. that's. And actually, if no. you're gonna put accessibility options or something like Dark Souls, it should say that. It should say I did it, but I did it on on no. easy mode. So I no, think. I don't. I don't agree with that at all. <laughs> I mean, it, it used to be. It used to be like on the 360 when they introduced achievements, there would be separate achievements for each difficulty level. Right. They've more or less done away with that now. Well, you know, back in the I day, think... it used to, used to get rewarded for beating it uh, with all of the difficulties. Like if you like yes. after you beat it on hard, you would unlock a newer, harder difficulty. So you would have yeah. to beat it multiple times to get. And games the, still do that, you know. De- Devil May Cry still has like ten difficulty settings, depending on how much torture you enjoy. Right. You know, but I mean, I understand. Like I understand if like. Uh, from software doesn't want to make dark souls an easy game they want to make it a a difficult game that's fine that's what they want to do and it's okay to have games that are challenging um you know and and maybe even inaccessible to people um because of their challenge but other games it's that's not necessarily 
you know, the way they should go. A game like Psychonauts is supposed to be like a fun, family-friendly type game. It's understandable that they would put in an invincibility toggle yeah, in the it, options it, It's menu. really not a big deal for, for, yeah. for games like Psychonauts or even The Last of Us. I think, yeah. I think having all that accessibility is, is a very good thing. Yeah. Um, it, like, but those games aren't like, like you don't go, Hey, look at me. I beat the last of us. You go, Hey, look at me. I beat dark souls, you know? Yeah. Um, anyway, instantaneous ramen in the chat says Con- controversially, I'm pretty sure the point of a game is to have fun. If you let others tell you how to play, you'll go crazy. Uh, I think that's very true. That's very true. Yes. A game is supposed to be enjoyed by the person who is playing the game. And if if you get enjoyment out of it by using, you know, tools like built in invincibility or rewind or even cheats, that's that's how you enjoy the game. Then Uh, we got two months from camera. Rick. Hey, guys. Hello. We got 36 months from Chris BX. How you doing? Good to see you. We got slopes with 100 bits. Get ready to send your sealed Nintendo brawl to Wada. (laughs) <laughs> all right let's plow through these real quick we got sonic colors okay. on switch won't be 60 frames per second who would have thunk it well what's interesting is because nintendo uploaded their version of the sonic colors like gameplay trailer where they go through all like the enhancements in the game and noticeably the the one that's on the xbox and the playstation youtube channels specifically mention. 4K at 60 frames per second. And also the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog YouTube channel. Yes. Um, the Nintendo version, however, does not mention... Obviously, it wouldn't mention 4K, but it specifically does not mention 60 frames a second, which the Nintendo Switch should be capable of. Did they specifically say it's not going to be 60? Because uh, maybe, they, maybe it's just not 4K. So they left that whole slide out. Maybe. I mean, there hasn't... There hasn't been anything, as far as I can tell, that confirms that it's oh, only it, in 30 frames a second. This article says it certainly seems like a deliberate edit, suggesting it may be a 30 frames per second experience on the Switch. So it's only yes. a suggestion. I mean, and also the yes. trailer is probably not in 60. No, the trailer is at 60. The trailer is at 60? It At least it's rendered at 60. It says it on YouTube. It might. Well, it might not be Switch footage then. Because remember, they they use this trailer for other. This animation is definitely for, sixty. They use this trailer for the other platforms. They just changed one slide for the Nintendo specific channel. Right, 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 right. I feel like it should say that then, not Switch footage. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I feel like they probably just took that slide out. To be completely honest, I feel like. Um, yeah. I feel like uh, it was just easier to do that than to replace the text. Um, yeah. And we know we know that Sonic, they're pretty lazy about stuff like this. So, <laughs> like for example, the, they're putting out the freaking uh, they're finally re releasing Sonic Three, and they didn't even put the widescreen footage up. That's they, true. They didn't That's put true. the footage of the game up. They put the wrong footage yeah. of the game. So, like, I still <laughs> think there's a chance the game's gonna be sixty on on the Switch. Mm-hmm. Maybe they left it out because they're not sure if it's gonna be sixty. Maybe they still gotta work on it. Yeah. All right, last bit of so. news. Uh, oh boy, Chip Uh-oh. Challenge. This is this is for you, Bobby. Oh boy, Chip Challenge, Challenge is making coming. its console debut on the SNES and Sega Genesis. I'm a I'm a buy it. Hell yeah, I'm a uh, buy it. Chip Challenge is is uh, being ported to the 16-bit systems and will be produced and sold by the Retro Room. Like a number of projects of this type, it's reviving an old game for additional retro hardware and producing physical editions that will work on your actual SNES or Genesis, just like the old days. Um, pre-sales are open. You can get the complete box, which comes with game cartridge manual and the box, uh, for $50 US or just the cartridge for $25. You can choose between SNES or Genesis, um, but you need to specify if you're going to get the PAL or NTSC version so it works on your hardware. Yeah, there's a Famicom one as well, um, or yeah. Super Famicom. Notably, there is, I think, f- four seconds of uh, gameplay footage. 
<laughs> and that's it. That's all you get. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, I mean, listen. Also, this look. I don't know what version this is. This is not the version I remember. No, I think it might this be. Weird it, it might be based on the original Atari Lynx version. But yeah, that's not the chip we're we're known we're we're used to. No, we're used to the PC version, which looks like this and sounds like this. Yeah. Nothing. There's no. Hold sound. on. Let me <laughs> let me check the uh, the chips challenge uh, fan wiki. There is there is sound and it's horrifying. Yeah. Uh, here it is. There you no, go. There's like sound effects and stuff. At least the version I remember. Is this it? Do you remember? Yeah, is it? I'm gonna get DMCA. <laughs> yeah, baby, chip challenge. <laughs> Give me it. How do I pre-order it? Uh, you go to the retro, the retroroom.com. Now, what do I get, Will? Do I want you blast get... processing? Yes, you want blast processing. Why wouldn't you want the blast processing? I gotta be honest. This seems like a Sega Genesis game more than a Super Nintendo game. Yeah. All right. Um, Matt, are you going to get the complete box or just course, the cart? Of course I'm going to get the complete box. All right. Probably never going to take it out of that. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's real quick. We have an unboxing to do. Yes. Now, this is very important to everybody. Uh, this. So uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about the Microsoft uh the xbox design lab uh yes. we have the controllers now i will i have yeah. i want to film the unboxing though on a separate camera so i need okay two seconds to set that up i think i already have it set up it might be a little bright in here for a hot minute uh, uh while you do that i'll just say cubone s u what will you do if Chip is the last Smash Brothers character? Oh my god, I'll lose my fucking mind, dude. That'd be amazing. <laughs> I'll switch my main. All right, here we go. We have three Design Lab boxes. Woot! Let's see, what do we got here? Uh, I gotta move the camera a little bit. You got a big piece of gaffer tape on the address label. Oh, you know it will. Yeah. Let's see. Now let's make sure there's no packing slip in here. Ooh, let me let me dim this a little bit. There you go, baby. Uh now I don't know which one's which here. Yeah. So we got three of them. Uh mm -hmm. this one how do I oh I gotta Oh Microsoft has has easy seals. Yeah, I think it's like eco-friendly seals. Hello. There we go. What the hell? Oh, ooh, this is yours. Yay! <laughs> it says Will was right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. That looks pretty sick. That is nice. That is pretty damn cool. Uh, I can't wait to play that and never let my daughter touch it. It's weird. It's weird looking. It looks like it's got like it's got a it's it's got the plastic is a little weird. It's got like yeah. Can't, it's hard to tell. It's it looks like it has like a film over it, but it doesn't. Huh. You could kind of see like there's some like imperfections in the in the yeah. plastic. Hmm. Oh yeah, I gotta give you my back for this. I think. Um. Interesting. Uh, okay. Now this comes with a USB C cable, right? Mm, nope. <laughs> so I got to go out and buy a, US, a USB C cable. Does not look like it will. Right. It comes with two double A's, which is great. Apparently, Duracell has a deal. Yeah, that's they have a they licensing deal. Yeah. All right, so that's the red one that Will got. Um, yeah. 
Let's see what else. Well, now, now it won't close. Uh, let's freaking open this bad boy. Next up, we got. Come on. Uh, this is either pink or black. I wish I I should have known. I should have gotten. Oh man, that's pretty. I should have gotten the pink one from home. I forgot to grab it. Mm. This is very pretty though. I like this a lot. That is nice. So this was to mo to be modeled after the pink Xbox 360 controller that I used to love using. Um, it's got the Xbox 360 style colors and everything. This is a very yeah. nice pink. I also got the uh, pink stand, which I thought was a charge stand, and it's not. And it looks like it matches perfectly. Well, that's good. Maybe it's like slightly less saturated, but you can't really tell. Yeah. Uh, very. This is awesome. I love this. Uh, I wish it was an Elite controller, so I'm a little upset about that, <laughs> but uh, whatever. It's. I mean, I ha currently I have this, which has the Satisfy grips on it. Um, so, uh, I, I guess I'll be using this now, but the back, I, I need to get a battery plate. Yeah. Uh, all right. Last one. Uh, this one is the official Wolf Den one. Now I haven't seen this and I, I like created my what i thought my own would look like but i haven't seen what you thought of uh, what one the official like. yeah yeah like i just butts around with um design lab but i haven't seen what the official wolf den controller is gonna be i did use my wolf den uh switch controller the other mm -hmm. day when playing smash with my friends and everybody made fun of me for it. Why? Because they think it's cool, mm -hmm. and they were like, uh, they they needed a rib you for it. That's why. Well, no, because I wasn't doing good in, in uh, Mario Kart. Oh, well, I mean, then, yeah. yeah, then you probably deserve it a little bit, Will. Yeah. Uh, I got to fix that it is... down a little bit. Yeah. This is freaking cool. There's, like, weird, like, dust and stuff on it. I don't want to rub it off yet, though, because I want to. I want straight to from the factory. Yeah. 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 I don't know if you can see it, but you see that? Yeah, you could kind of see like the 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 weird, yeah. like dust on it. Wolf den right there, baby. Look at that. I think that looks great with the white buttons and everything. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I gotta get a stand for this because this one, uh, this one will probably just live on a. Oh, I have a wall hook I can use. There you go. All right. I gotta get. I gotta get a stand for. I gotta get more stands. So, that's it for the Xbox Design Lab. This cost a lot of money. This was like two hundred and seventy bucks <laughs> for these three. Yeah, I mean, they're they're not cheap, especially if you want the engraving. That's like an extra ten dollars. Was it? Um, yeah. I don't remember that. But if you really like Xbox, which we do, not a bad option to have. Yes. Especially because, like, you know, different color controllers are cool. Um, and they're, for now, for some reason, they're more expensive than standard ones, especially on PlayStation and Xbox. So if you're going to get a different color controller, why not just custom make one absolutely you know I, and, I mean, and I've, i wish i wish they did elites because i want an elite controller but uh i don't want to uh, it's lame i want a custom one these custom ones are awesome yeah i wish they did elites and i wish sony and nintendo would do something similar right. i know nintendo has different color joy cons but it's not the same right you know it's all they have a strict set of joy con colors to choose from this is like whatever the hell you want also, on the Japanese Nintendo site, you can uh, get whatever Joy-Con colors you want. Like, if you want mm -hmm. two Joy-Con, like a pack of, like a pair of Joy-Con, you can mix and match colors, which is pretty cool. And you can't do that. At least I don't think you could do that uh, in America. 
Um, but this was uh, this is a great system by Microsoft, and it came pretty quick actually. Yeah, because um, they have to custom yeah. make these. Um. Anyway, uh, moving on real quick. Uh, we got to do the tweet of the week. Oh right. Did you just try to yell it like like this is a year ago? <laughs> it, it was my uh. You, you woke my Manchurian candidate programming. <laughs> <laughs> Will just went into fight or flight. Um, <laughs> this is from uh, 20 BC, and it says, <laughs> "It's it's uh, it's uh, Mr. Krabs versus Jigglypuff <laughs> on on uh, Final Destination or Battlefield version of Final Destination." It says, "Ahoy, SpongeBob, me boy! I messed up me di and will now die at 20 percent." Arg, 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 arg. As a joke about the All Stars that brawl, is, that is a good joke. <laughs> now we'll talk to you people very briefly. Yes, if you left a comment on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on our YouTube channel, this is the part of the show we will answer you. But of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us at home, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we were done with everybody else. Last week, when we talked about the OLED Switch, we got a comment from that gaming guy who says, Switch fans were whipped up into a frenzy by all the pro coverage. Content creators making hay whilst the sun shines. What? Switch content gets the most clicks, so it pays for them to continually stir the pot. It's all business and fans are the commodity. Damn. I'd Harsh. Like to, I'd like to think we covered the Switch news very well. Here yeah, I think we covered honestly, it fair. Honestly, we don't get nearly enough credit as, as we deserve because we could have milked the Switch Pro news like crazy and we were very realistic about it. And honestly, we yeah. fucking nailed it. <laughs> so praise me is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, Elk82 says, I never realize how many ads are avoided by using YouTube Premium until people talk about it later. Yeah, I think we talked about uh, mid-roll ads. Um, yeah. And honestly, yeah. Uh, mid-roll ads. Uh, I, I, we, I talked about last week how I have YouTube Premium, so I never see mid-roll ads, and I don't realize how just how many mid-roll ads people use. Yeah. Uh, hey, we got raided by uh, Retro Gamer Remix. Uh, Eric? Oh boy. I think that's Eric. Hello. How are you doing? Welcome. Thank you for the raid, my guy. I appreciate it. Um Seamus Byrne says, My question is why is this podcast so good? Wow. <laughs> Thanks, bro. See, that's the praise we need here. Yeah. That's, that's the ego boost about. I need. Yes. Um Kohi Kohei Yamaguchi says Keitai means mobile. Pair the word with the... Oh, here we go. Let's get into this. This, uh, this weave shit, Will. Pair the word right. with the name of an item, and it's describing that item as a mobile version of said item. Keitai Denwa means mobile phone. People have just come to abbreviate calling mobile phones as simply Keitai, though uh, that's kind of antiquated, and most people call it Sumafu. No, Sumaho. Short for smartphone. Sumaho. Sumaho. Sumaphone. Get it? Ah. <laughs> it's very interesting. Well, technically, a Game Boy <laughs> is a type of K-Tie since it's a mobile gaming console. This, I actually, I, I love this. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if 90s Japan marketing described it as, okay, I can't read that. Uh, K-Tie Shiki Gameuki, mobile version gaming machine, or something like that. Want a new Nihongo teacher, lol. All right, well, my teacher wasn't wrong. All right, he just didn't go into this much detail, but I enjoyed the, all this detail. Thank you very much, Kohi Kohei Yamaguchi. Imuki um, is a good name for a dog. My, yeah. Get a what? dog and name it Gimuki. Gemuki. Gemuki. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this was because on the Japanese website, they listed the three ways you can play the Switch. And it said uh, mm -hmm. the the handheld way was uh, was uh, K-Tai, which, yeah. which is what they call a phone. But apparently that's just an abbreviation of mobile. Um, yeah. Or it just means mobile. Uh, 
since then I learned that uh, the Switch in Japanese, now this is going to get me some shit from the actual Japanese uh, oh boy. people, like j Jap people who actually know Japanese, but the yes. actual, like, you know how in English it's the Nintendo Switch OLED model? That's the official yes. name. In Japanese, mm. it is Yuki, I believe. Yuki e edu moldedu. It is literally the uh, e l moldedu, and and Yuki means something like a uh, like a device or like or like a machine or or or, or like new device yeah. or something. Uh, and also means organic for some reason. Um, basically, it means it, it's it's called the new device, el version, whatever. Uh, it also uh, it just I'm saying it because it also does not roll off of the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> um, Meerkat jeans in uh, last week's World on Live Steps. How come you guys don't talk about comics much anymore? Uh, because we just don't have comic videos anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's. Uh, blame uh blame yourself the word. because yeah like literally when when we used to have comic like articles that we would read i would watch the view count go down and we would lose <laughs> retention time so it's actually yeah. honestly your fault yeah el equals extra large maybe maybe i thought it was an abbreviation of oled but it might actually mean extra large. That makes more sense. Burnout. That was the phrase I was looking for. Burnout. But yeah, no, you guys are the problem. <laughs> <laughs> EL makes more sense. And actually, that's that gives some credit to Kevin Kenson because he thought it was going to be called the Switch XL. I thought it was going to be called the new yeah. Nintendo Switch. And that's why I, wa I really wanted it to be. Uh, that's why I really wanted it to be called the new Nintendo Switch in Japanese. 3DS LL is what they called the XL. That is true. Yes. I think EL might just be an abbreviation of OLED. Um, it's because OLED equals organic light emitting diode. Oh. Oh, so it literally is organic EL. Yeah. That makes more sense, Mimi memes. See, we, we're figuring it out. I hope, uh, yeah. I hope, uh, Kohei, uh, uh, gives us credit for figuring it out by ourselves. <laughs> Um. Anyway, uh, see, we learned. Everybody learned something today. Yeah. Now we're in the chat with you guys. It's an educational podcast here. See. Um. Uh. Chris B X. Well, speaking of comics, will you in the market for an Incredible Hulk one eighty? Um. Depends. The twenty bucks. <laughs> That's the first appearance of Wolverine, if any of you don't know that. Uh, I think uh, Mike has a copy of that. Of course he does. He's got a lot of that stuff. Yeah. EL equals LED in Japanese? I have no idea. How you designed the logo anyway, Bob? What are we talking about? The Wolf Den logo? I'll show you. I have, a, I have it on an Instagram post. There you go. It was uh, very complicated, and I spent a really long time on it, and I'm glad it came out the way it did. I did this because I never wanted to do it again after this. Um, I got to change this. I don't want this CRT filter anymore. But uh, it started with this. It started with me drawing in the sketchbook, doing all this type of shit. This is like almost exactly what Husker's logo looks like. <laughs> <laughs> but I ended up with this nice round one that I liked. Uh, but and I also don't. This is all wrong Japanese. Um, but uh, I ended up liking this round one. And the finished product looks very close to this sketch. Um, so I picked one of these guys and I went with this giant grid. <laughs> and this is how the logo was made. I tried to make everything sort of fit within itself. So like certain things went so that everything would look cohesive at the end. And this is all different versions of the logo. Um, and this is the finished ones that we went with. And this is more finals. And I wanted it to be used in a bunch of different ways. So you can use any of the logos. 
what is this oh this is the finished little motion graphic and that's it that's how it went it was a huge pain in the ass this happened in 150 weeks ago i don't know what that means oh august 23rd 2018 so it's been three years since this has happened yeah anyway uh lucifer's friend says best 16-bit superhero game in my opinion batman on genesis uh probably x-men 2 the clone wars on genesis that is very good that game is great we're talking 16-bit 16-bit x-men 2 clone wars definitely is up there yeah Um, maybe yeah maybe that is I know there was also a couple of Spider-Man games that weren't bad, um, but yeah, I would have I would, I would put my money on that. Hannah says X-Men looks too. great. You should put it on some apparel. She's still salty that I made fun of her for her dog's name I, being Zim. I mean, I was the one who made fun of her for having the edgy. Dog I name. started it. I started it. I said yes, that's great for the we hot are, topic. We are people. both picking on her. Yeah. I was going to say hot topic girls, but I uh, I stopped myself. I mean, not wrong. Uh, <laughs> Your wishes says you still rocking the RG three fifty one P. Just ordered a version. P is mine the P? I am the the wooden one. No, 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 not that one. Not the P. I don't have the P. I have the RG three fifty one. Is it the M? Or is it just the RG three fifty one? Is this one? V three fifty one V is the one that I that I use right now. Um, yeah, they're all the same. They're all good. Uh, uh, Mecha Dragon for Space Jam two. Yeah, Microsoft is with the controllers that they made. Yeah, those they're are ugly. nice controllers. I must say, <laughs> we just all said right. the exact opposite. <laughs> they're ugly. I mean, the look, only one that's look. good is the Roadrunner one with the clouds. All the rest are ugly as shit. To be fair, that movie specifically looks like it's doing everything it can to piss me off. (laughs) (laughs) And look, I love the original Space Jam as much as the next 30-year-old millennial, but I understand it's not like a sacred cow or anything. It's it's a very, you know, weird movie that is dated in a lot of ways, but it was so simple in its concept. The Looney Tunes have to fight a bunch of aliens in a basketball game so they get Michael Jordan to help them. This movie just looks like it's trying to do every cliche, stereotypical, modern, cart, uh, corporate cartoon thing uh, with like a thousand pop culture references and uh, a Porky Pig rap breakdown. And it has to have some tacked on story about uh, father reuniting with his son uh, and, it, and it can't just, you know, be the Looney Tunes. It has to be cyberspace with all the Warner Brothers properties because that's what kids are into these days, the internet and Warner Brothers. So it's it just... And I hate myself because I know I'm going to see it. <laughs> and I'm going to make my wife watch it with me. Well, let me know if it's any good because uh, uh, it doesn't look I like will, it. I'll give him this. They showed off... Um, a clip of the movie and and LeBron and Bugs went to DC World and oh. and already I'm just grumbling the whole time cuz I knew it was going to be corny and like lame um but it showed Superman and Jimmy Olsen and they were animated in the Bruce Timm Superman the animated series style oh very good that was nice to see i the think clip, I, the I, clip I, of I, granny in the matrix not nice to see I think game's going to be trash. I mean, movie's going to be trash. They hard nerfed Lola Bunny. <laughs> not happy about it. She looks the same. No, uh, she does not. Looks the same. Where are the curves, Will? It's not even this is a bad picture cuz it's not I'm not I'm not going to I'm not sexualizing a cartoon character anymore, Will. My therapist says it's not a good idea. Uh Anyway, this is the only controller that I think looks good is this one, and they don't even show a front-on picture of it. Oh, wait, it's available today. No, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. 
There it is. Wow, so cool. Uh, oh, here it is. Show me. Show me. Uh, oh, I have to download the asset. Okay, cool. Here it is. I downloaded it. Oh, it says Acme on it. Oh, it's a bomb. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. All right. I'm going to take one more. All right. Uh, someone said, just saw your Elgato HD60. You still, uh, the video, I, I, I presume, you still recommend to get started streaming. I do. I recommend the HD60 S Plus if you want to stream uh, Nintendo Switch games, for sure. The, whatever the newest HD60 is, get that one. It's great. And for the love of God, output it to a monitor. Um, anything else? I think uh, we're good. I think we're good. Yeah, and everyone's just talking about Space Jam. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on, on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So go and check us out over there so you can watch us on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get, this show from please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms uh i will be i'll try to be live tomorrow i'm not sure if that's going to happen but uh on thursday i might be playing mario golf with uh jiggy uh dragon feeny and one shot girl which is uh i'm actually a fan of dragon feeny i'm very excited about this she's a, she's a mario maker streamer I'm um, making it to the big time Mario Maker crowd. There you go. Um, anyway, they grow up so fast. So hopefully that happens. Uh, I just got DM'd about it like two seconds ago. Um, but uh, so I'll be there on Thursday. I'm trying to get a video out about these controllers also uh, for later in the week. Um, so I'll see you later in the week. Uh, everybody, go watch uh, who's on right now. We got a uh, freaking AJ. There you go. There you go. go. AJ. Is he made? Oh, he's ranking. <laughs> he's ranking Nickelodeon characters. He's putting them in a tier list. <laughs> so everybody go say hello to AJ. Everybody uh, go say hello to AJ and tell him that Will demands Danny Phantom be in the A ranking. I think he next is. To on board with that all right then tell him that gerald from hey arnold should also be in the a ranking but arnold himself should be in like c all right everybody say arnold c tier yes all right uh and i'll see you all later goodbye bye